wellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. You're listening to A Quirky Journey, the healthy family podcast with your hosts, Joe Witten and Leah Follett. Welcome to A Quirky Journey. Join us as we share our family's journeys to good health. You'll find plenty of inspiration, tips and recipe ideas, as well as stories from everyday people who've struggled and overcome health problems and diet challenges in their own families. I'm Jo Witten, author of the blog and book Quirky Cooking, and I'm here with my ridiculously lovely friend and co-host, Leah <laughs> Follett. Did you like that? I, I did. wrote the intro, so I she decided that I would intro. put that in there. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't read it before we started recording. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> she is ridiculously lovely, guys. I know. I am! <laughs> because she did my homework for me and wrote the, and wrote the notes. <laughs> well, it's not really, it's your homework, but I just jumped in there on our notes and I just changed a few things. So I've actually modified your auto cue. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, so what are we talking about today? Uh, so today we're going to talk about, uh, the tools that we use in the kitchen. So the tools of your trade. Yes. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a few silly things that I do in my kitchen and a few good things that I do in my kitchen. And then I suppose on the back end of that, we'll talk about things that we have that we didn't need to buy. So investments that, um, you know, the money could have just stayed in our bank accounts. Unvest- and the, uninvestments. Uninvestments. Yeah. The, the kitchen tools that we thought were a good idea and, and don't actually use as much as we thought. Yes. Um, so <laughs> things that we should really be handing over to someone else if they're going to use them. Um, more than what we would be using them. Yes. And then I think towards the end we might talk about how to choose some, if you're going to replace cookware, what you're going to need to look yeah. for. What, how to re- yeah, what things mm. to replace. Just to make sure that it's a, you know, a low chemical option and a health providing option because if you're investing money, you want it the, to last, you know, the lifetime of the product and also serve you health wise. Yes, definitely. Mm hmm. And it's one of those things where you can easily get caught up buying things that seem to be quite trendy or you think they're a good idea at the time and you spend a heap of money on them and then you end up wishing you hadn't. So we're going to talk Mm. about all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So um, I suppose the reason for having, I mean, the reason you kicked off your whole adventure Mm -hmm. with, um, going into thermomixes and, and things like that was that you wanted a real food kitchen. You wanted to be making and doing preparing. Yes. Well, I already was, but mm. I was doing it the hard way. Yes. <laughs> so um, about, let's see, probably about 13 years ago, um, I started getting into all the bulk buying and um, buying grains and grinding them and making everything from scratch. And so I bought a big secondhand grain grinder. With okay. The, with the big stones, the Retzel brand, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, that gigantic monster sat in my laundry and made lots of messes, but it was very handy for grinding grain. It was very mm-hmm. noisy. Yeah. Um, in my farmhouse kitchen, it sat in the kitchen because I had a gigantic kitchen. And um, when I saw the Thermomix, yeah, I did change over to that, but I started off with everything the old-fashioned way, definitely. Mm-hmm. So, so real food is real food. for everyone else that, that's not quite au fait with what we're talking about. So it's real food where you can identify each individual ingredient that you're putting it together yourself with minimal packaging and processing. So yes. it's as fresh as we can yep. and usually as single ingredients. And you can obviously do that without a lot of gimmicky kitchen tools, but there are some that obviously make life easier, like if you want to grind grains or nuts or seeds or anything like that or... But we'll talk about that as we go. Well, we can do we can do that. Seeing that we're talking about thermomixes and grinding, yeah. Should we give out okay a little bit of a rundown? You can do the thermomix, and I'll talk about my my limited knowledge on the other brand. Okay, no, not limited knowledge, my limited experience because I go and visit people's places, and everyone's got something different in their kitchen. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of like test kitchen, and I get in there and have a really good turn of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, when I well, I first saw the Thermomix probably, goodness me, um, how long ago was it? 11 years? 2003. 
Oh, you must be years. coming up on, yeah, oh, anniversary time. <laughs> Love at first sight, was it? Love at first sight. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> but I was just, like I said, I was pretty much doing everything the old-fashioned way, the traditional way by hand, and I loved cooking, but it was taking me a lot of time. And when you're cooking from scratch with, with basic ingredients, if you're doing a lot of stuff that's, um, you know, when you're right back to making your own nut milks and, um, you know, all your grinding grinding seeds and grains and things and stuff it does take a lot more time than usual cooking where you just grab a packet of flour or you just grab a carton of milk out of the fridge so um when I saw the thermics how it could do so many functions and so well I just went oh my goodness that would save me so much time so that was the big thing for me um so yeah but it took me a year to get one I didn't okay. I, I couldn't buy it straight away because it was expensive so we had to save up and um, it was something that we only had one income, you know, and it wasn't a big one. Mm-hmm. So it was something that we saved up for, and I never regretted it. So that was that was probably my my biggest purchase ever. <laughs> I've always been the second hand, buy everything second hand type of person, but that was one thing I did buy brand new. So um, that's probably something that I've used every day ever since, and most of the time I use it heaps of times a day. Um, so that's probably the top one in my kitchen. So did you want to talk about the other brands that you've sure. had? Sure. Okay. Experience so it's, there's, there's a product in every price range for every person. So just because you use Thermomix doesn't mean you're, you can't use something else in its place. So, um, but I do have to say that in 12 months, I burnt out two Breville food processors. <laughs> And I still have my Thermomix and I use it not quite as much as you, Joe, but <laughs> I've had it three years and I haven't killed it yet. Oh, so I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm tracking pretty well. I have that's to it. tell you really quickly something really funny. I oh, do. When I went over to Perth to do the photo shoot for my book a year ago, uh-huh. um, I had to take one of, I've, since the, since I bought that first Thermomix, that was an older model. Mm-hmm. I've since bought a couple more or earned them with my sales when I used to be a consultant and stuff. And one of them was quite old and had some of the buttons were wearing and, and the face plate. So I took it with me to Perth and said to the service guy, could you possibly just tidy this up for me? He said, yeah, sure. And he comes back out after a while and shook my hand. He goes, I've just got to shake your hand. He said, inside the Thermomix is like a little black box and it records everything you do. And it records all the times and all the speeds and any errors and anything like that. And he said, yours has the most miles on it of anybody's I've ever seen. Oh, truly? <laughs> he said, it's got more time on it than like local restaurants. <laughs> My gosh. And I, said, I said, the funny thing is I often have two going at once. <laughs> <gasps> oh, see, well, no, I'm a little kinder on mine. Maybe that's why I'm doing so well. But yeah, okay. So the initial investment was a scary one for me as well. Um, I kind of... Uh, it's like being on a roller coaster. You just close your eyes and hope for the best. And mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of what I do. I just buried my head in the sand because I knew that I needed it, yeah. um, to be able to feed the kids. I, you know, I, the way I had to feed them, yeah. I needed it. And I knew that it was going to provide me an amazing amount of savings, uh, long term. So I invested in that. But since then, I have also been able to, because the Thermomix was really the only thing out at the time. They've now got a Bellini, which you get from Target. And I've had a bit of a turn on that. And, you know, it grinds pretty well and it has similar functions, um, but I just don't like how it fits back together. Uh, so I think it's about $300, and if you watch the catalogs, I think you get a lot cheaper than that. But the only thing, the one thing that really irks me is on the lid, on the inside, it's got these little struts, and instead of on the Thermomix lid, you can just run a spatula right around the outside of it. Because of the Bellini lid, it's got the struts in it, you've got to stop at every strut and scrape it out. Mm. So, I find that a little time consuming and because I'm so lazy that <laughs> when I was there, I was wasting a lot of, of what I was grinding up um, on the inside of the lid. So I've had a turn at that and I did is really like one, it. Is that mm-hmm. the one that when it's, if it stops, like if you stop it, you have to go and reset all the times and. I don't, I don't know. There's... I just turn it on because okay. I don't set times. Oh. I, I know but if you cook all... though, if, you, if, if you're cook. using heat, you do. Oh, well, I just grind stuff in mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just, I, the, when I did use that, I just, just ground up my basic stuff. I didn't do actually, actually, I don't use my Thermomix for cooking really. I make oh, a soup, don't but I don't use it for anything else. You're going to have to show me how to I use the Veroma. To. You're going to have to come to my class. Well, actually, I should come to your class. <laughs> I should find out how to use my Thermomix. Next week. 
Next week. Yay! Oh, is it really next week? It's next week. Are we having a sleepover next week? Next week. <gasps> oh, I haven't looked at the calendar in a week then, have I? No. <laughs> You'll have to send me a text message and tell me when you're getting off the plane. Do that. I will. Definitely I wanna, do that. That's I important. I want to be picked up. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other brand that I have tried is the Thermo Chef. Yeah. Um, and my mum's actually got a Thermo Chef and she loves it. And the only floor, it does has the weighing capacity as well. I think the Bellini by memory didn't have the weight in it, but it had the heating element. So you couldn't weigh in, in increments as you pour things in. Um, so the Thermo Chef is the closest I've come, um, but it's just, it's still a little bit different, a little bit clunky putting it together. And uh, she's only had that for months and I haven't really, I've had one turn of it. So it hasn't been amazing yet. But I have to get back to everyone. But it's, you know, like it's, I think Bellini's are two, $300. Then you've got a five, $600 purchase in the Thermo Shift. And then you've got the, what's that? The Thermo Mix, the one that we have. <laughs> I forgot. Forgot. <laughs> Something shiny. Oh, dear. There we go. Um, so, yeah, then you've got your Thermo Chef. But you've got an amazing warranty with the Sherman Thermo Chef. And I'm not sure the Thermo Mix. And I'm not sure that the others offer the, the warranty and the backup that Thermo Chef actually offer. Thermo Mix. Thermomix actually well, offer. Well, the good thing yeah. about Thermomix is too is you've got a consultant alongside helping you learn to cook with it, which you won't get with anything else. Oh, I have to admit, I must have been the worst person to sell to because all I wanted was the bloody machine. So oh, well, I was swearing, just you, drop the machine off. That's all I wanted. And she wanted to come in and show me everything. I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, just just leave me with my box. Leave me go. Go and be gone. So <laughs> I probably I didn't actually pay much attention to anything she was doing, which is probably why I don't know how to use my That's aroma. probably why you don't cook. <laughs> well, I do the, I do the steaming in it, like I steam pumpkin and basic okay. things, you know, yeah. for my soups and that sort of thing. But you know, I haven't done chickens and I haven't done all the, the other things. And I don't yeah. think I don't think I have my cookbook either, any, either anymore. But I think I gave mine. it to someone. I have yours, yes. but you know the one that they give you? I think yeah. I got the travel edition. Um, but, yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, oh. I just got mine for grinding. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> I don't know what we're up to so now. We're, talking we're supposed about to be talking about what's the most important things in our kitchen. Oh, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm guessing that your most important thing is a Thermomix. That's number one. Yeah. And, number, and what next? Number two would have to be my Lake Crusade pots. Uh-huh. I just love them. I think we mm -hmm. talked about these last week, but yes, and probably... I think I, I think I could have maybe stolen one of them in my suitcase if oh, you were they're so, so dedicated good. to looking at them all the time. I just they're so I pretty use, in your photos. I just use them every single day, mm -hmm. especially because you know since being on gaps, I've always got something slow cooking. So yeah, um, and because probably the other, I don't know what order to put these favorite things in, but anyway, you don't have to have an order. I have top five. Top okay, five. top five. Okay, mm. next one would have to be my Falcon oven. Absolutely love my Falcon oven. Yeah, even I did that. I think I snuggled your oven. I think you did. I think you would have <laughs> nipped a, it if you could. There's a picture <laughs> of me snuggling your oven when you're not looking. <laughs> that that was oh. something that I never, ever imagined having in my wildest dreams. And it was... Like, I didn't know they existed. Oh, I did. I did. Oh. We, when I was a teenager, we had similar sort of thing that was run on Coke. So like, you know, mm -hmm. coal, not Coca-Cola. <laughs> Cocaine. <laughs> no, not that either. I'm just like, run on Coke. Oh my God, that'd be, oh, it's that's the, interesting. It's the coal sort of stuff that's wet. Oh. Yeah, you hose it. it well. It actually stays that's, wet. That's anyway, something it looks I've, like, I've, I've not seen that before. Yeah, it looks like coal. And then all our hot water um, was heated by the, the oven, the stove, sorry, you know, going. So you had it going all day, every day, summer, winter, rain or shine. It was always going. And it had the warming oven and everything. And so I loved that oven. Um, mm -hmm. That was when I was growing up as a teenager. And um, so when I saw these Falcon ovens and all those, you know, like it's pretty much like the Arga. Well, it, okay. is, it is an Arga, but it's just the Australian version. So they, mm -hmm. they import the cast iron frames from yeah. England and the bits and pieces, and then they put it together over here and sell it as a Falcon. So I've got the big double door one with the – how many – Things has it got one, two, three, four, five, five burners plus a teppanyaki plate, and it's big. So yeah, it one is of them's big. a wok burner. Um, but I use that all the time. And the good thing, probably my favorite thing about it, besides the fact that it has two different, two separate ovens that do lots of groovy things, mm -hmm. is that the gas cuts off automatically if the flame goes out. 
Yeah. So um, I don't have to worry about it. I just put things on, put it on very low heat on a tiny burner and just leave them cook for all day, all night, and it's no problem. So I use that in my licorice pots a lot, Mm -hmm. Um, and I've also got like the frying pans and stuff. Slow cooker, definite. That's something I would not be without. I've always used slow cookers, always had them, and you can get them quite cheaply. Just make sure you don't – we'll talk about this a bit later, but – just make sure you don't get the Teflon ones. And I've got a Sunbeam Banquet, which is six litres with the removable ceramic bowl. And I also love my uh, – what else have I got that was my favourite? Um, I'm your favourite. You're, you're my favourite, but you don't live in my kitchen. I'm getting jealous. You'd be really nice. You're talking about our favourite, then you I, didn't mention I would, me. I would love for you to be in my kitchen, but – I know, I know, I know. You might be good times. Good helper. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, is it my turn? A dehydrator. Oh, the a dehydrator. dehydrator. Okay. And again, this is something that I grew up with all my life. We always had, except when I was a kid, my my dad made our dehydrator. So we had. Oh, was it a solar one? No, it was even simpler. Um, we lived in Cairns, so that's hot, hot, hot. You know, lots of sunshine, uh-huh. although lo- also lots of rain showers. So you have to run out and grab the drying fruit and dash it inside. But um, we did that a lot. But he just put, he just got wooden saw horses, put them outside and he made these wooden frames with, um, wires strung across and a piece of glass over the top and the dry, the drying fruit went across the wires and the glass on top so the flies couldn't get in and it had fly screen somehow. I don't know. I can't remember mm-hmm. how it went. I have to ask yeah. him. But anyway, he just made these, um, like big rectangular things and mum would stick them out on the saw horses, like put a couple of saw horses there and stick them across. And that's how we dried all our fruit and um, in the sun. Wow. But then as we, when I grew up, we had a, you know, like this sunbeam dehydrator or something. And now, mm-hmm. now I've got the U-Butte Excalibur 9 tray. So that's pretty cool. And probably my other favorite tool, if I don't, well, I have two more. All right. Okay. You can have extras. Okay. My old, old, old wooden handled knife from my grandpa. Oh, I've seen that. I, use, I, I use, think I got frisked at the door. Yeah, that's right. You <laughs> I was did. leaving. That's my favorite knife. And people buy me knives because they want me to have a decent knife because they think it looks old and scabby. I'm like, I don't want any other knife. And the, all the other ones go in the drawer. And I just keep using my grandpa's knife. That's my best knife. I even took it with me to Perth wrapped up in something in my suitcase so I could use it at my photo shoot and my cast iron pan. <laughs> Oh, I love you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and my Ben Reiner. I do love that too. And that's for the veggie spiralizing. Okay. Oh, what? Can... What's it called? Ben Reiner. It's an upright. It's like a, it's got the little metal blades, different. It's mm-hmm. got like four different sized blades. So you can choose what size noodles you want of your veggies. And oh. um, you just screw it in and it's got a, a, a like a handle. And sure. And it stands up on legs and you just pop your veggie in there and poke it in. And then turn the handle around. And it's so easy, the kids can do it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's the veggie spiralizer. I use that mm. a lot too. I think that's all. Is that all? Is it my turn now? It's your turn. Okay, it's my turn. So obviously my favorite thing is my thermomix because I use it how many times a day? Um, I love having jars. I'm Ah, uh, yes. Jars. I love, I, I buy um, coconut oil in jars just because I like the jar. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they've got to be a decent sized jar and, and recycling them. And I've always got pickles or sauerkraut or something else going on them. I love my crock. I've got this big ceramic crock, which I make sauerkraut in. And I think it's a 15 litre crock. So I, I use it a couple that. of times. A, yeah. That use it a couple good. of times a year. And then I just store my sauerkraut downstairs. At the moment, we're um, in a house where the ground floor is actually cut into the um, below the street level. So it's really mm. quite cool down there. So I can, instead of putting all my sauerkraut in the fridge, once it's finished, it's doing its fermenting, I can actually store it downstairs. So it's almost having a larder. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I'm really happy with that at the moment because in summer in Queensland, you, you know, like it just mm. ferments so quickly and, and because of the heat, it sort of perishes and, and all Gotta that. Got to keep it all in the fridge. Mm, you do. And that always took up a, quite a lot because when you're making 15 kilos or 15 <laughs> litres of the stuff, you've got, you know, like. You need a cold room. Many, you do need a cold room. I wish I had a cold room. I know. Wouldn't that be but cool? I'd give it give a lot of it away as well. And oh, now I'm good. selfish. I don't need to. <laughs> I can keep it because it's not going to perish down here. Yay. So, yeah, so that, that I'm sort of getting a little bit grinchy there. Um, <laughs> I love my slow cooker. I'm a real stickler for a good spatula. 
love yeah. a good spatula. And I'm devastated because my Thermomix one is just starting to fall apart, so I'll have to go and order a new uh, one. Yeah, it's you know it's it's had its it's had its run. It's it's done its thing. So they're <laughs> my favourite things. But you know I couldn't do without a slow cooker. Mm. You know we've always got stuff in there. It's for my broth. It's for my you know slow cooked meats. I make tallow in it. I make you know like get the suet. I ah. Yeah. It's just it's one of those must have things for me and because I don't have the gas cut off like you do. Yeah. I can't leave it, it on the stove and it's yeah. Yeah. It gets really hot if you're using the oven all the time. So yeah. during the summer you can put slow cooker outside and and you don't heat up the house as much when you've got to make those those meals. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or mm -hmm. the um also I find some people do best with putting their slow cooker in their laundry. My laundry's outside. Oh, your laundry's outside. <laughs> I know, and I've actually got an original toilet outside, oh, an original outhouse. How cool. We were just it's talking about that the other day. That, that's, that's such a good idea. <laughs> it is such a good idea. <laughs> I won't talk about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so moving into a real food kitchen, there are some upfront expenses and some things that we love to have and things we just need. Yeah to get by but you know there's something on every level of finance for everyone yeah and what we didn't is, start off with everything that's no for sure. and we didn't we've built up for this mm. and it's you know this purchase and you know like you forgo getting a nice new wallet for you for for christmas yes. or going out to dinner or whatever so you save up those things well that's it's, the thing we never go out for dinner ever this is dinner. No. this is the restaurant here so it needs restaurant quality equipment <laughs> that's my excuse <laughs> well that's fair enough too um but, but through, it did take us years to get to this stage yeah. It's not something yeah. you do overnight. No, that's right. That's right. But what are the tools that you would deem sort of necessary? You have your slow cooker and you have your thermomix. And, well, but for, for is instance, there anything else that, you know, like that would come in second on the second yeah. tier? These are must-haves. Yeah. These are things that would make your life easier but not essential, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. So a very heavy-based stock pot, mm -hmm. even, if, like if, even if you can't do the slow cooker, um, you can generally get, well, then again, the slow cookers are so cheap now. I know. I paid $60 for mine, like yeah. five, eight. I mean, I a good quality. I've lost count of the years. It's old. It just keeps getting packed and moved. Yeah. A good quality stock pot probably costs the same amount anyway. Mm. Um, but either one, because you need to have something that you can do your broths in. Yes. And, and your soups and the slow cooked things. Mm -hmm. Um, just things like wooden spoons, um, you know, and always being mindful of, well, instead of getting the plastic spoons, get the wooden ones. Instead of getting the plastic spatulas, get a wooden one or a um, mm. metal spatula if you're using it with a, like a cast iron, not enamel. Um, cast iron, just a cast iron, like even if you can't afford like a Le Creuset pot, you can get a good old-fashioned cast iron pot and pan and things like that from camping stores. Mm -hmm. they're not going to have that smooth finish so you can't do things like scrambled eggs in them because they'll all stick but you just use lots of fat yes you use lots of fat and <laughs> lots and lots and lots and before you start cooking in it you always season it so you've got i use macadamia oil or, or you know your coconut oil or something and just put your um put a thin layer over the bottom and just turn it on and let it sit there and just smoke for a bit mm -hmm. and then turn it off let it cool and then it's seasoned um, and, mm -hmm. and even if you, like my mum, like we've always used cast iron in our family. My mum always, we never ever put the cast iron in the soapy water. You just wash it under the tap with the hot water and a scrubber. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you keep it well seasoned, everything just slides off it anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about scrubbing it. Yeah. Um, and so then you just, and as soon as you've finished washing it, you put it onto the stove and turn the element on and let it dry off like that. Mm hmm and um, put a bit of oil in and season it and then let, let it sort of dry in there and then it's ready for the next time you use it. And that way it doesn't go rusty. you find the ones from the camping shop and places like that, they do tend to go a bit rusty if you're not careful, like if you if you leave something damp, a bit of dampness in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just have to scrape it back. But you can sand them back with sandpaper mm -hmm. and then re-season. So um, that's that's probably the best cheap option for cookware that you're going to mm -hmm. get if you can't afford the really good ones okay and i was mentioning to you before leah that there is a new company in australia called let me just find what it's called i think it's ausfont a-u-s-f-o-n-t-e 
mm-hmm. and they're selling um, Australian cast iron and it's not too bad. Um, it's not as smooth. Like I've got American cast iron and it's it's like smooth as silk, the surface. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like non-stick, but it's cast iron. Okay. Um, but the I haven't found that here in Australia. If anyone mm-hmm. has, let me know. The Osfont mm-hmm. one, it has a bit of a smooth surface in the center of the pan, but it's mm-hmm. not as smooth as the American one. But, you know, it's better than going with Teflon or something that's going to come off in your food. Well, that's right. You just, that's like, right. Like you say, you've got to heat at lower heats mm-hmm. and use more fat. Yeah. And I think that's one problem that people often have is they turn the heat way up high and then wonder why everything burns. Yeah, and they think that it's – well, because everyone's so rushed. Yes. It's the, you know, like it's, if I turn it up higher, it's going to cook faster. That's right. And then also don't use enough fat because we've been told for years not to. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> but we know better now. We do know better. We do know better. Okay, so – I, you know how you're talking about that little thing that makes your noodles? Yes. What's that actually called again? A Ben Reiner. A Ben Reiner. I'm writing that down. B-E-N-R-I-N-E-R. Okay, I bought cool. it years ago from Amazon. But, okay. Um, I know it was about $60 when I bought it. Yeah. And I think it's gone up to more like 80 or so. And it's right. green. And it, it, it just doesn't look like it should be worth that much because it's, it looks mostly like plastic, but it has really good blades and it just lasts. And, it's, uh, and I find is a this lot a little of, short thing? Because no, I've got. No, I was just going to say the thing I wouldn't about buy again. Forty is, centimeters tall. Oh, it's quite okay. So the thing I wouldn't buy again is probably the size of one of those mini Coke cans, and it's green yeah, and it's don't made buy them. by. It's made by Betty Crocker or whatever. It's yeah. Betty Betty Bossy. They're whatever. just a plastic. Um, yeah, they're a plastic thing, and for the blade, oh, the, the RSI, actual, you've got to mm. put the you know the zucchini in or the carrot in. You've got to turn it, and it's that action of you know the doorknob action of of rotating your wrist, yeah. you know, fifty to hundred times. And if you're feeding a family, oh, it's it would take better, forever. You, what you've got to go and do it in front of the TV and watch a movie, Pride and Prejudice or something, <laughs> before you're actually got enough for it to feed a family. Is that so the ones with the plastic blade? Like they don't actually no, have a metal blade? No, it's got a metal blade, oh, okay. and it does it does a good job, but it takes and forever. It's, it's like single serve use only. Oh. It's not for a family. So that was one of the things. Because I find with like when you're making zucchini noodles, you need a lot because they cook down. They do. And everyone always wants leftovers. Yeah. But also if you're putting a harder vegetable in there, so like to get the beetroot spirals or you mm. know, the carrot, those harder vegetables are even harder to turn. Yes. You just don't have your purchase on that. So that would be one of the things that I bought that I really didn't think I need. Yeah. Uh, I have also, I, I really like my dehydrator, Joe, but at the same time, mm-hmm. I'm cooking and eating fresh stuff every day. And yeah, because same. we don't eat the fruit, we don't use it for the dehydrating. And yep. we only make jerky when I want to make pemmican. And pem- for everyone else, pemmican is, um, half quantities of jerky and half quantities of, you know, uh, tallow, beef tallow ground up together to make a, like a travel food bar that, you know, so the meat doesn't perish. Mm. So you don't that add- was the, you don't yeah. add dried berries to yours like the Indians do? Um, no, I use some spices. I use all spice and some turmeric and those those sorts of things. But the kids are much happier if I give them a piece of pemmican and a little cup of, you know, um, like five or ten uh, sultanas, mm-hmm. and they'll have a bite and have a, you know, a sultana oh, yeah. in there so at the same time. So they're doing the same, the same sort of thing anyway. They're doing the same sort of thing, but yeah. they like a pick and mix rather yeah. than having it in that one yeah. flavour. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I bought this, I've got the nine tray Excalibur as well. Mm-hmm. And when I first got it, I used it for everything. Yeah. But since I've been in Sydney, all I've done is dry a pair of jeans, some socks and a set of sheets. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I use mine a lot more. Don't you make your activated nuts in there? Uh, I do. I do, but we don't go through that many. So okay. I go through a kilo of nuts in a month. Oh, you're good. We use so nuts too much, we just, well, yeah. As far as the, the baking, <laughs> the paleo side of baking or the, you know, we don't use the nuts and seeds as, as often. We don't have those treats every day. We don't have the no. breads every day and, we use and that them sort of thing. So for smoothies though, like, and, and making nut milks and all that. So we have the nuts going through quite, yeah, quite yeah. often. Yeah. Well, we don't have uh, any of, any of that going on. And in what our about, house. So like, I probably crackers? could have been, you know, just bought the small Excalibur yeah. rather than the nine tray. But at the time I thought, yep, I'm going to make yogurt. I need to be able to fill that yeah. thing with yogurt and I need to be able to do this and do that. And, and like I said, I've done some queen size bed sheet in there, a fitted bed sheet, because <laughs> being a Queenslander, you put things on the line and they're dry in 15 minutes. Yeah. But you come to Sydney and you've only got one set of sheets and it's just like, oh, help me. You don't have so, a dryer, yeah. obviously. 
no in these houses there's no room for dryers like the laundry is outside in the courtyard and the lawn the washing machine only just fits into the little hole where the laundry thing is so there's no room for a dryer at all so adjusting to that now I'm prepared I just went and got another set of sheets I waited for them to come on sale at Target because there's no way I'm paying full price for for, because I really like a thousand per kale sheet I'm a bit of a sheet snob (laughs) <laughs> um so but that's the only thing oh and also uh gabriel took his buzz Lightyear electronic toy i think mum and dad bought it for him for christmas one year he took it in the shower oh, and then no. it started sounding funny so i've put that in the dehydrator and <laughs> it came back to life it started working again so it's hey, actually getting, it's getting used but it's not yeah what? iphones in the iPhones. dehydrator i never thought mm-hmm. of that because um mm-hmm. isaac dropped his ipod in his in his um soup one day at lunchtime so um we oh, stuck that in a jar of rice and it came good <laughs> yeah, or a fridge. That's the other one is you stick oh, it in the fridge because fridge okay. draws, draws out moisture as well. Yeah. Um, it's what I haven't stuck in the – I haven't needed to, but, yeah, I, I, I can definitely vouch for a Buzz Lightyear toy into the uh, dehydrator. <laughs> well, now we know we all need dehydrators in case that ever happens. <laughs> I know. Uh, the other ridiculous purchase I made was a juicer. I went and bought a Twin Auger Green Star juicer, which mm. Gabriel, he was in charge of YouTube and he actually, you know, the five-year-old was in charge of finding the juicer because <laughs> every year Santa brings us a uh, family present, so we yes. got this juicer. So he'd be watching the YouTube videos and this is this and that is that. And the only reason why he chose this one was because you could put, um, you could soak coconut shred, yeah, desiccated coconut, and put it in a juicer and it'd separate it into cream and have it all like dry, um, the dry cake left over. Wow. And, you know, like it was, it was pretty much you could bake with it just then and there. It was so dry coming out. So I got this wow. huge juicer and we were doing juices, but now we don't. We yeah. don't eat the fruits to put the veggies and we eat veggies three times a day. So it's kind of like we're kind of getting our load. So yeah. other than making our coconut cream, yeah, um, it was kind of one of those purchases where I had to have at the time and now I'm kind of like it's actually its place. Is yeah. on my bookshelf. Oh dear! <laughs> in my in my in my good room, where my nice sofa is. Yeah. Um, it's actually next to Pete Evans on the bookshelf. <laughs> I'm sure he'll so, be pleased. <laughs> I know some people have ornaments. I've got a juicer on the bookshelf. That's funny. Mm-hmm. I I must admit my juicer stayed in the cupboard. I never. I had. I think I probably used it all of five times. But it wasn't, mm. it wasn't the really super expensive one. But I just found it such a pain to clean. And when I figured out juices in the thermomix, I went, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Well, I think they're fairly important. It depends on what you're doing and what you want yeah. to do with your diet. But, uh, you know, like I got a message the other day on Facebook and a lady has had a double mastectomy and she's my age mm. and she wants to know about alkaline diets and, and that sort of thing. So obviously someone that's really sick that's going through that needs to get all their vitamins and minerals back in. Juicing is it's a brilliant, amazing thing. Um, but just as a regular everyday thing, if you're looking after your diet three times a day and eating, as well as you can, mm. um, yeah, it's kind of I just find that superfluous. Mm. I find that the the concentrate of sugars from the juices that extract everything, yeah, you know, you struggle that, yeah, we struggle goes, with that too. It just goes straight through me. Yeah, so yeah, I, we struggle. Yeah, I prefer to have it if I'm going to have it, have it with ice and water in it, and all the fiber, and it's quite, it's more watered down than the sugars and, and all the fats. You've got to and add the fats. You've got to add the avocado. So and, you might as well just do it in the thermomix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I have a tendency to go overboard with my greens. So mm. when I'm doing the juicing, um, you know, like it's half a bunch of kale and then I have a huge detox and, and you know, dump of, of uh. toxins and then I end up in a puddly tear of mess and uh, crying and carrying on. And I actually did that Christmas Day when I got the juicer. That's so funny. I was in tears on Christmas Day and had to take myself off to bed because I was a mess by the end of the day because oh. I overjuiced. Oh, dear. I know. I so wasn't ready. It was a rookie mistake. I know. I know. Um, something else that I don't think I'll ever go back to, and I know that some people are going to shoot me when I say this, but Tupperware. No, me either. I got just, rid of all that. Just can't do it. No, I me can't. You, I loved it. I had a few matching things. I had a few sets of things, but now I, you know, you know better, you do better. Mm. And so that's just an expense and I don't mind handing my things off or, you know, like sometimes they break and I just throw them in the bin and I know that with Tupperware you've got this warranty where you can, you know, if anything breaks, you take it back and get another one. I'm sort of looking there going, yeah, it's just going straight in the bin. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I have, um, like you, a bit of a jar fetish. I just collect jars and store most things in jars and I buy the, the glass, like you can buy the sets of glass dishes with the, 
um, lockable lids. Yeah, they, what are That's, they? They're called. Hold on, I, I open my cupboard and see I've clip got, lock. They're like a clip lock brand. What yeah, are they? Glass I've, lock. I've, I've got, got the well different glass brands. lock. Oh, Target have a set that yeah. they bring out of all you know little rectangular ones. Yeah, I've got and a few different brands. Yeah. I love those. And also Pyrex, when they yeah. bring out with their little round glass ones with the yeah, lids. I buy them as well. Mm, I really like those. They're yeah. just multi, multi-functional. I know, and I know purpose. for people with a small children, it is difficult to swap over from plastic to glass because of the dropping and breaking and all that kind of thing. Um, we swapped over from plastic cups to the stainless steel cups so mm-hmm. for the kids. And got rid of the plastic ones and yeah, off to the camping store. While yeah. you're getting your cast iron pan, you just get the little stainless steel, steel dishes and bowls. Cup. Yep, as well. So we did all that, and the adults used the glasses, and the kids used the stainless steel. Yeah, or, or even the enamel ones, although they chip if they break. Um, and with the dishes, yeah, I I think I kept a couple of little plastic containers for if we were going somewhere and the kids needed to take something, but generally I didn't use them. Mm. mostly I use jars like even if I go somewhere on the plane I'll take a small jar with my chia pudding and a bigger jar with my smoothie and <laughs> stick it all yeah. in my bag yeah yeah works well screw lids yeah that's all right <laughs> just looks a bit odd when people sit, sort of look at you when you're drinking your smoothie out of a jar in the plane oh, well. oh no no it's posh <laughs> it's, it's posh fun. have you seen the mason jar yeah, with I the got... handle on the outside yeah, yeah we grew up with those did you? Yeah, my, see, that's another Texas thing. My family always drank out of jars. <laughs> really? Yeah, the mason jars. My my dad doesn't like because you could get the really big, tall, preserving mason jar mm-hmm. ones, and that's what my dad always used for iced tea. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what we grew up with. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Um, should we move on to? Okay, so we're oh, spoken about a few. I didn't oh, you anything. No, oh, not. that's right. You've got to have a turn, okay? Yeah. Me, it's you. No, it's me, okay. it's you. Whatever. It's your turn. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what I've bought that I, I think probably my Come on, trap, you must have kitchen load of stuff. Well, my trap has probably been in the past was when I was young and first starting my, you know, getting everything together for my home, I bought everything very cheaply, uh-huh. secondhand if I could and cheap as. And that was just because I was trying to be very money saving. But looking back, I found that a lot of times things would last for a year or maybe two and then Mm -hmm. they would be dead, chucked, gone, and I'd buy it again. So really it was false economy. Um, Okay. Can I I tell you a story about false economy? Yes. Okay. This is tragic. It happened to me this year. Oh. Like this is still fresh in my mind. This still hurts in every fibre of my body and I still get cranky about it. it, Okay. (laughs) So Mark decided last minute, gave me a few days that we're moving from Queensland down to New South Wales. That's it. We're going. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the car. I'm driving down to Sydney going, yep, okay, if I've got to set up house again, I'm going to have this fridge. I'm going to have this amazing fridge and it's going to be one of those milk bar fridges. It's going to be glass. I'm going to have, you yep. know, wire shelves and I can see into it and that's what and that's what I've wanted for ages and I've been waiting for my current fridge in Queensland to die. Actually, yes. it's still alive. It's I'm waiting for mine to die too because I want one of them. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Anyway, it just turned out that I didn't get to choose my fridge because we needed one in a hurry. So Mark rang up this dodgy company that do secondhand white goods. So he gave them the whole measurements of where the fridge has to go, Um, $250. They'll deliver the fridge. Great. When it turned up, the guys that brought it in needed a bit of a bath, but we're not judging them. They're hardworking. (laughs) I can understand that. That's great. Um. (laughs) But they wheeled it in and, of course, I already was pretty cranky because I wasn't getting the fridge I wanted and I wasn't getting the fridge I'd actually – I hadn't even laid eyes on this thing. He just paid over the phone and they were dropping it off. So I didn't want to know the fridge anyway. When they put (laughs) it in the hole, it was filthy. The outside of the fridge was filthy. When I opened it up, they had all the sauce in the door of the fridge and it was just an absolute mess and I was just just so devastated and heartbroken. So I started cleaning it. I found cheese slices in the fridge and the ice cube tray still had ice in it so i'm sure that i end up with someone's tray you know refrigerator Ew. from from the tea room that's great that, that's what i think that they've done they've just gone yep there's a crazy lady here she needs a new fridge there we'll give her the one out of the office or the one out of the tea room so i got this fridge i got over that once i cleaned it yeah and then the cockroach problem started oh no yeah I didn't know. Do you know what German cockroaches are? Yes, the little horrible ones. 
oh, I had no idea. And, of course, me being so uh, particular with my pesticides and my cleaners and my all my other stuff, I couldn't bring myself to buy a tin of Mortine. So I was doing all the natural stuff. And within three weeks, I was infested. And the oh, nest no. site was the refrigerator. Oh, so no. the fridge cost us $250. And then it cost us another $180 to get the fridge treated and get the kitchen all back in working order. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, secondhand things, you've got to be really careful. Yes. You've got to see it first. But even then, that was something that I couldn't You wouldn't have, have known. Seen. But I tell you, oh, strain on my marriage. <laughs> strain on my marriage. I'm just about to cry. Oh, I don't cry. Now. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I go to the fridge and I think, oh, you, I hate you. Oh. But that's all right. It keep, it's serving its purpose at the moment and one day I will find my perfect fridge. You will. One day. I will. But, yeah. <laughs> happily, and they'll live happily ever after. Uh, happily ever after. <laughs> like you and your thermomix, it'll be me and my fridge and that's we'll right. have happily ever after and it'll just be a beautiful thing. Oh. So, yeah, I'm so with you on the whole make sure, I mean, you know, I, the secondhand thing, you yeah, do your best. Yeah, just be careful because I do, mm. I mean, I love it buying It ends up secondhand. costing you more. I love, I love secondhand shops. I love secondhand clothes and I love looking for treasures. But yeah, if you be, can't see all the inside and exactly yeah, see everything, every surface careful. that you're purchasing, <laughs> then, not so or good. if you're not an electrician and you don't know what the lifespan is of a product, maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. save your pennies and get, get the good quality stuff. And, Otherwise, and that, you just... And the thing is, you know, if you've got a basic set of pots and pans and knives and cutting boards, you can make do. Bowls, you know, really basic well, stuff. You can make do and save your money until you get the quality. It's um, real food, so yeah, it is. you just need a real kitchen. Yeah. You don't need all the la da stuff. And, and, and although we love having all the bits and pieces, I mean, if you didn't have a way to grind your seeds and nuts and things, you would have to buy the pre-ground, which is more expensive and all that kind of thing. But you can sort of, you know, there, there's pros and cons, I guess. But or you could just not have nuts and seeds right. in your diet, that's which right. is what pretty much what we do. Well, we, they only get wheeled out on special occasions. Well, that's it. And with gaps kind of cooking. Mm. Anybody could do it with any kind of kitchen. You could do it camping. It's yes. so simple. It's just yes. meat and veggie. If you just concentrate on meat and veggies in broths, um, you know, anyone can do that anywhere. Mm. It's only when you want to start doing a bit more, you know, breads and milks wow. and things like that that you start needing all the other stuff. Since having this Facebook page, I've actually done so much more cooking with the nuts and the seeds than I have done in ages. And it's mm. kind of like, oh. I have to do another thing, and yeah, <laughs> I just like, and then we've got to eat it, and because we're not used to eating that much, it's kind of like I make this big pie, and we just eat like an eighth of the pie between the, you know, the four. I'm of sure us. you can find some takers. Just say, okay, well, everyone, yeah, it's my really address good is because no. <laughs> people come to visit like you, yeah, and then I get to try all my stuff out on 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 them, and I've yes. always, and usually we get people, you know, takers down, and they'll stay with us a few days and do some work in the city, and then they're off again. So I get to pack lunches for them. Yeah, so I think they're go. thankful that I have, you know, I've been pushed to going and doing these other things and That's having right. little adventures. Yes. So I mean, it's all good. That is good. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, are you finished? I think so. I can't really think of any terrible mistakes I've made with things I've bought, but probably the juicer was the main one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, for the people that are going out and, and probably replacing things or the things that they want to buy, maybe we should talk about now mm-hmm. um, what to look out for because we've done, we've done quite a lot of talking about the importance of pots and pans. Mm. We'll talk about the surfaces maybe. Yes. And the difference between surfaces or, or what we think about them as far as their health giving benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, so the brand you mentioned, that was an Australian brand. Yeah. Oz and Oz. it's just, it's just a cast iron, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's not cast iron with an enamel coating. No, no just plain. It's okay. the sort of thing. It's kind of like what you'd see in a camping shop, except yeah. a little bit smoother and better shapes. Okay. So a better quality. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So I'll start with the most expensive ones and mm-hmm. my dream cookware. So okay. the, the Le Creuset thing that you've got, mm-hmm. I'm super jealous. I've got green <laughs> envious eyes for those and they come in the most gorgeous color ranges but, you know, available. You just mm-hmm. have to wait until they're on special. I got my first one through, um, uh, what's it called? Catch of the day. Oh, okay. Half price. Wow. And they quite often do it. Okay. All right. So yeah. I just need to get on there. Catch so the, the importance of 
getting these things and doing the right thing when you, you're doing an investment is that we're trying to avoid, what we're trying to avoid is the fluorocarbons, um, PFC. I'm not sure what that stands for, but I keep seeing that in my research. I know what it stands for, but I'm not going to say it. It's too hard. It's too long. Uh, it's too long. <laughs> um, so aluminium, those sorts of things. Yeah. Now, everything's got a heat at which it's safe at. Mm-hmm. And if you're not using your cookware in the, um, the right way, and I, you know, like if you're buying, um, even baking sheets from Coles, those metal ones, they yeah. don't say to cook it, you know, keep it under a certain temperature. And sometimes your oven keep, creeps up a little bit, especially when you're doing roasts. Mm. But once you take an aluminium tin over a certain heat, it starts to doing this off gassing thing. Yeah. Um, and also aluminium, as soon as you apply heat, the aluminium can be transferred into your food. Mm. So it leaches with heat and with, with acids and, and that sort of thing. So then you're consuming the aluminium in your food and you know sometimes you've got people like my my children specifically that like to hoard heavy metals yeah. um we all have we have heavy metals in our environment so we've obviously got lead we've got you know aluminium we've got you know irons and things like that in our soil that we come in contact with but we're not eating copious amounts with it and if you're baking with it at every meal and you're trying to do a recovery diet and gaps and you're doing your slow cooking and and you're using an aluminium pot and you're doing broth in an aluminium pot Mm. you're essentially super you know infusing the aluminium into the pot and it's kind of going to cause you some some problems you're doing the absolute best for your body but at the same time you're adding to your chemical load um, so it's kind of counterintuitive, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so aluminium is quite a, you know, a toxic thing and, and it's in everything. Um, I think Joe, the other day you mentioned when we were doing, we we're talking about chickens and how you cover a chicken with aluminium foil. Well, um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes to keep it nice and moist. Yeah. Yeah. So it's aluminium. Yeah. It's aluminium. So, and that was something that I, I need to nick my mum's roaster. You need to think your mum's roaster. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, like we when we do broths and stuff, we do them in the slow cooker because oh, – well, not broths, sorry, roast chickens. We do them in the slow cooker because yeah, if we're not roasting it. them, to keep them nice and moist. moist. Or if we're doing the oven, we do them breast side down and, you know, those sorts of things. But mm. we can't cover them with the aluminium foil because, well, That's for me, idea, it's fear of, of leaching. Um so that was kind of that was something that I just wanted everyone to be mindful is that they can be adding to their load and not even mean to be. Mm-hmm. And from that, you know, if you're worried about aluminium and you think you've got, you know, you can get aluminium poisoning and there's a whole heap of symptoms that you can look at, um, you know, and it's like seizures and speech problems, brain disease like Alzheimer's and dementia and Parkinson's disease are all linking back to an excess amount of or accumulation of heavy metals, including you know, this aluminium in the brain and, you know, like you get aluminium in your deodorants mm. as well um, and in some antacids and bicarb is a big one. Yep. Um, if you go to the Whole Foods store, you can see that on the packet now, I think Bob's Red Mill and there's a couple of other ones, honest to goodness, mm. um, they have, and it says on the outside of the packet, there's aluminium free. So I'd be wary of anything at the supermarket if it doesn't say aluminium free, if it's a bicarb soda that you're using for cleaning products, then maybe you could, you know, use that as a less expensive version, but I wouldn't be cooking with it. No. I wouldn't be adding that in or I wouldn't be brushing my teeth with it or any of those other things. Um, Did you want to mention the Blantz one? Oh, I love Blantz Australia. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. You can get Epsom salts and all kinds of things. It's, uh, obviously, Blantz Australia is an Australian product and you can get it in bulk. Yeah, that's, that's just she, the biggest Leah, blessing. Leah put me onto that and I've got my... I think it's five kilo buckets of the, uh-huh. um, the baking, uh, sorry, bicarb soda. Yeah. And yeah. it's, um, all aluminium free. So yeah. Yeah. So that's really important. Um, and if you're wondering why in the world you would buy five kilos, it's because you use it in the bath for a detox bath as well. <laughs> but it doesn't go off. No. It's in these special tubs and you know, like I've, like three years. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah, I like to think of myself as a, a, a long, endurance customer but really yes. and a repeat customer i only had to buy from it through them twice yeah over this but entire t- thing but you've told a lot of people about them. i've told a lot of people <laughs> oh i love blants they are so good uh what else okay so we've got teflon and non-stick pans mm-hmm. so those ones with the nice slippery coating so you you know your eggs slip out of the the thing once again one 
once they're overheated, they also off gas. But the danger is that you can only use those a few times. And then once they start to chip or you get scratches in them, you actually end up with that Teflon and that nonstick coating in your food. So yes. you'll be ingesting those as well. So when you think that, oh, it costs me X amount of dollars to buy this product and, hey, look, I can only use it for six months before it starts to lose its surface, then it's not. It's one of those things you've got to go out and buy again. So yeah. I would just be wary of that as a product. Yeah. Um, stainless steel, I don't know anything about that negative about stainless steel yet. No. It seems to be a good option. The only problem I find is that a lot of times it sticks. Like if you're trying mm. to do eggs or something, it will stick. Yeah. Um, but I, that's why I use my cast iron mostly for stuff like that. But for, for, um, just simmering veggies in broth and all that, it's perfect. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then we've got the ceramic ones. So you've yeah. got, you know, like your, the crusade, it's a ceramic, um, coating, yeah. ceramic coating or whatever, but you need to make sure you're getting a reputable product mm. because I'd be concerned about lead glazes on yeah. some of the cheaper alternatives yeah. so that are made in other countries. I don't know what their laws are, but, you know, when, and even sometimes the importing laws mm. are bypassed. We don't manufacture things here with lead-based paints, specifically in cookware, but if it's something that's being imported, then I don't know whether that's... To, yeah, sometimes get away with things, don't they? Yeah, so I would just be cautious of that. So mm. I s- suppose... Just save your pocket money and do the best you can and buy the best investment and then hand it off to your grandchildren. Yeah. Because that's what we're talking about. Like it's yeah. my mum still uses her enamel pots that she's had for, you know, since she got married. Yeah. Well, we, when I got married, I got given, my grandpa was always the one that collected all this stuff and mm-hmm. he gave me a set of stainless steel copper bottomed Paul Revere pans. He gave mm-hmm. me my knife. He gave, you know, it was all, and the cast iron pan that was all from grandpa. He passed mm-hmm. all that and it's all secondhand been used for years by other people and loved, but yes. it's such good quality that I could, I'll be passing it on to my kids. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the idea that's of it. What like you want. The, we have so few um, traditions and relics that we pass on because mm. of the expense of buying the, you know, the good quality ones. And yeah. we've got such a range of, you know, cheaper, lesser quality alternatives that I think we just, as a, you know, we're more disposable mm. and we don't think to the future and think, well, we're going to pass this on or this might become an heirloom thing. Yeah. You know, it's crazy to think that a knife in a family would become an heirloom <laughs> item, but that's essentially what it is for you. Yeah, and my mum's got a heap of them from grandpa as well. That mm. they're they're starting to get so worn from being resharpened, resharpened that they're getting very thin blades, but they're still getting used all the time. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Um. So I suppose we can talk about. Okay. So I did mention that you can have end up with heavy metal poisonings. And if anyone's got any questions about that, that's kind of something that you need to go and talk to, um, you know, a naturopath about. Um, and you can look in and get that checked out with hair analysis. They'll give you an idea of what levels of, of what heavy metals you've got in your system. Should but, mention too, yeah. oh, sorry, you go ahead with the heavy metals and then I'll... Well, I was just going to say that it's not a concern to everyone. No. Well, it is a concern to everyone. As long as you're cooking with uh, appropriate cookware, you're aware you've cut the aluminium out of your, you know, your deodorants and, and all those other things, you're aware of what's in your environment, then I don't see any reason, unless you've got, unless you're already very, very damaged and you've got to work your way back mm. and you want to do it quickly, I think that's when you would go to a naturopath. But for everyone else that's still functioning really well out there, that's doing their best and that's eating well, I think that you're just being aware of a few foods that actually help you detox and move some of those heavy metals, um, you know, from the bloodstream and, and just help support secreting. So cilantro and garlic, mm-hmm. um, selenium, chlorella, and then all your veggie greens. So, yes, we come in contact with these things in our environment naturally, and as long as we haven't got them in our kitchen and we're, you know, reinforcing the, um, you know, the ingestion of those things and we're just eating a diet full of lots of greens and and lots of fresh food then I think our body actually copes with those and detoxes for itself by itself it does a very good job of that but for anyone Mm. else that's struggling there's there's options for you and and if you have like a list of symptoms and you can't actually work out what they are and can't join up the dots and it's I haven't got this autoimmune disease but I haven't got this but I just feel unwell and this isn't right and I just need to change something then it could be that it's it's one of these things and if you've grown up with using um you know, your aluminium cookware and, and mm. I, th- I know that was a huge thing in the 70s to have those um, those pots. Mm. So 
whether or not that's a path that anyone wants to go down to. But you can definitely do a natural chelation by yourself in your own kitchen and see how you go with that. And for everyone else that needs extra help, you need to go and see a naturopath or get some sort of support um, elsewhere. But there's still yeah. natural options. Yeah, Give the body good. what it needs and it will just do its thing. Have you um, had much to do with like there's a lot of people that go for the pots that they say they're not Teflon but they have a non-stick surface so um, are they the Bessemer ones um, I'm not sure about Bessemer I'm not really sure what they mm. are I'm thinking of the ones that are like the blue with the white spots uh, what blue are they with called the white stone ne- neoflam neoflame neo I've heard of that one oh, stoneware yeah there's those ones and they just like they show ads on tv and you can crack an egg in and cook it without any fat and they go on about how what great it is that you don't need to use fat. And I'm thinking, but why wouldn't you want to use fat? <laughs> I know. Well, why wouldn't you want to use fat? You know, like that's your energy source. That's, that's right. That's where all the good stuff happens. But um, I think anything like that, they are putting on some kind of coating and it has to be some kind of chemical coating. Well, and so, yeah, if you are going to use those things and if that that's a product right for you, then definitely keep it under its heat range to mm. make sure that it's not going to cause you any problems mm. at all. Um, so in having a little hunt around in my drawers, yes, I started looking at my baking paper. Yes. So my baking paper I used to line my trays and, mm-hmm. and, and all that. And I started reading the outside of the packet of one of my baking papers and looking at it at, in comparison to the other. And one, I've got this, this natural parchment baking sheets and mm-hmm. it's, you know, environmental and it's compost friendly and all those other things. It said it's got silicon. Yes. It's got silicon. I did not know that. And yes, I eat silicon. It's in my food. But maybe that's something else to be aware of is that, you know. I did look into that. Um, yeah. A while back because that is the best baking paper. The, mm-hmm. If, if you care baking paper. And they yeah. say it's very high quality silicon and that mm. it's the best option. It doesn't have the heavy but metals just... and it doesn't have the bleach, but. Yeah. The bleach that that was the other thing that mm. it said it said it was bleach free and yep. and that you could reuse it and all those yep. other things but it just got me thinking because the other packet didn't have anything on it and I kind of figured well it's really white it's not brown baking paper it's white baking paper so mm. it must be bleached it must be um, I think this one's even made out of recycled something yep. as well so even going down to that you still have to be cautious putting mm. that in the oven or you know choosing the the type of linings that you're going to use. I suppose I didn't realize that, and that's just oh. something that I'm still looking at today. And I'm just wow. I think I silicons, to... if from what from what my research has been, if you're re- using the really good quality and you're keeping the heat below like mm. 200 or so, I think yeah. it's okay. But I don't know. It's I guess it's it's something that people will have to think about for themselves. I yeah. don't I don't have a problem with using if you care baking paper. I find it. I find from what I researched, well, it right. seemed to be quite good. So, And it's like the best of a bad yeah. bunch or it's, you know, whichever way you look at it, you just, mm. as long as you can make the best, most informed op- option for yourself well, or choice, it. then you just go with that. Yeah. How do you go with the actual silicon moulds? Like I use silicon moulds for really used, my chocolates. Yeah, but, but I don't use them in the oven. No. Um, I have used the silicon moulds in the steamer of the Varoma because it's not as high a heat as an oven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that only goes up to 120, doesn't it? Yeah. So, mm. And we've got in the Excalibur, we've got silicon sheets in that, but yeah, it also right. doesn't go up to that full heat. No, you're only using it usually on 60 degrees or something. Yeah. 37 or something. Yeah, because you still want all the enzymes in the food to be that's raw right. and still happy under that. Yeah. yeah. You just want to dry it out. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, that was just something else. And I was mm. just like, oh, what, what's that about? So, yeah, once yeah. I saw it in my drawer, I had to go and have a bit of a Google and, I'm still, I'm still not sure where I sit on the baking paper thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just something that I didn't even consider. Yeah. Man, the more you know, the, the more... less you actually do know. Yes. <laughs> you know, like right. it's just, it's like you've turned another page and gone, ah. Oh, and I think now it... it makes sense. And then, yeah. And the thing is that, like, we don't want to overwhelm anyone. There's, it's just that there's so many things to think about and you can only do one thing at a time, change one thing at a time and go little by little. And I know. You've like, been hanging out with Brett Hill too long. I have. That's, that's exactly <laughs> like something he would say. But it's, I mean, there's some of us that are very gung-ho and they'll chuck out everything in the kitchen. Is, is that you, Leah? <laughs> uh, yes. I like to re-gift things or I used to yeah. like to re-gift things and then I got the guilt and decided that, no, I can't re-gift things because I don't want to poison someone else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit like that. 
Um, but I do find that as you learn things, you change things, and as you know better, you do better. And it's yeah. just, but it is something that happens gradually. And don't freak out if you can't change everything at once. But start making some better decisions. Yeah. Start yeah. And pull that old cast iron pan out of the back of the cupboard and season it up and use fat. Give it a bit cooking. of a sand and away you go. Use fat in your cooking and don't be scared of it. As mm -hmm. long as it's good fats. We should probably really quickly mention here um, the new findings with cooking with on high heats with fats that they used to think that coconut oil was one of the best ones, but they're actually finding that olive oil is actually better than coconut oil at higher heats. But mm -hmm. even so, coconut oil, I think they say 170, don't go above that. Mm-hmm. Olive oil, 180. Yeah. Um, macadamia oil is higher. And I can't remember really? what macadamia oil is, but it's a really good one for, for if you wanted to fry something. But Damien, I'm still going to stick to my tallow and tallow my is lard my, and all yeah, that. my lard and, and my things like that, I think. But Damien and the wellness guys are going to do a podcast on it. So they oh. said they'll have it, um, cause Damien's been researching all this stuff. Mm. So I'm not sure if they've got it out yet, but we'll have to ask them. Yeah, let us well, know. you've just got to be aware of th different things have yeah. different smoking points. So whether That's it's right. your kitchen tools that you're using or your spoons or ladles or whatever it is, including your food. But just don't, like, don't stick your pan on the on the hot plate and then just turn it way up and expect to not have trouble because you will. <laughs> yeah. Turn it down a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, within reason. And you can sear things and then turn it down a little bit. I know that you sometimes have to have it high for a sec, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's only you know a short period of time. Yeah. And when you're doing gas cooking, you're really not supposed to be barbecuing no, and searing anyway. Not. No. So it's you know all those slow cooked things. Yeah. You know gentle cooking. Yes. Yes. Um. Oh, there was something else I was going to say, and I've, it's lost. It's, it's lost. It's oh gone. well, you'll find it at two o'clock in the morning. You ring me up and you go, <laughs> guess what? No, I won't. I won't ring you at two in the morning. <laughs> no, it's like 11 when you send me a message. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not two in the morning. No. Oh, okay. Well, that oh, was good. One other thing I'd like to share. Okay. I suppose. I kind of, yeah, I think, I think we've covered everything on my list today. But I saw the other day, and I'm pretty sure it was Cindy Amira, and I hope she forgives me if it's wrong, but She's got this quote that she said, and it's just, it really sits with me. Yeah. And it's just because it's good for you, it doesn't mean you eat it every day. Yes. I, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Because even with green juicing, people are eating them every mm. day. And even with the coconut oil, we're using them every day. Or just because eggs are yes. good for you, we're having them every day. And like, well, how much of this every day? Can I and, handle? Well, every day can you handle? And, you know, like, then it sort of got me thinking about, well, is that the reason why we have so many people with allergies coming on yeah. and all those other things is because we yeah. can handle it seasonally and we can handle, you know, like certain fruits and vegetables at this time and if we're eating them all the way around, then we develop a, a sensitivity to them. Like yeah. with gluten is a little bit okay and then too much is just overload the system. Yeah. So that was something that came in with me. Mm. And, yeah, just thinking about the oils when you just mentioned the, the coconut oil is, yeah, okay, switch your oils around. If you're yes. going to be and you're going to go for those nonstick pans, you need to keep the, the temperature low um, and then you switch your oils up. So you've got you've got that whole, you know, a variety of what's going in and how you're cooking them as well. Yeah. And that's a good point. Mm. I thought good. so. Yeah. I thought so. Hmm. Right. All right. Well, thank you. And for all your help there with all the good information, we'll put some links on the bottom of the post on the, we usually put them on the wellness couch page. So if yeah. you are listening to this from iTunes and you can't find the links, go over to the wellness couch and look for a quirky journey on the wellness couch. So um, the wellness couch.com backslash a quirky journey. And then you'll find when you click on the um, podcast, there'll be a little blurb and there'll be links at the bottom. So that's probably for us that at the moment, that's the easiest place for us to put them because both of us are busy and we're not getting blog posts done each time we do a podcast. No, we're struggling. Um, yeah, we're trying to keep up with our homes and kids and homeschooling and cooking and everything else. So please excuse yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just a pair of mothers. Yeah. <laughs> be gentle, be kind, be very kind. <laughs> so if we do mention a link that you can't find, just send us a message on Facebook or something and ask us about it and we'll, Try and get it up there and hand it on to you because sometimes we forget things. 
but um, quite often <laughs> I do oh, anyway. <laughs> I know, I know. And there should be no excuses, but there so is. As soon as you've got a family, it's just, there's, there's a million excuses. <laughs> oh, boy. It's hard to find time to scratch yourself sometimes, but I'm sure most of you know exactly how that feels because you're probably mostly mums. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for listening and thank you, Leah, for all your help there. And we hope you all enjoyed it and found it um, helpful. And um, if you want to post any questions, please do on our Facebook pages, on the websites. Um, we've got our, probably the Facebook pages is easiest though. Just post some questions on there. Mm -hmm. And we would love for you to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. And you can also check out the other Wellness Couch um, podcasts. Like we said, there's the Wellness Guys and other, there's heaps more on there. Um, and you can, you'll find Cindy O'Meara's one, which is up for a chat. You'll learn heaps from them and have a lot of fun. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll love to, we'd love to have you come back and listen again. And just keep working on those changes bit by bit, small steps at a time, and we'll just keep coming back and sharing more of our journeys with you, and hopefully it will be helpful. And please don't be overwhelmed. Please don't. Please don't. Because and we you can't do everything in one day. No. It's just <laughs> choose one thing and be happy that you can You've achieve made that one thing. Celebrate the small changes. Yeah. Thank you for listening, everyone, and thank you, Leah. Okay, bye. Bye. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.